top-secret satellite with nuclear capabilities, international terrorists, and undetectable moving headquarters. There's only one problem. The cook from Under Siege is back. I'm not even a good cook, but there are some things I'm good at. Yeah. Last time, he rocked the boat. This time, the sky's the limit. Under Siege 2. This I'm trained for. Oh. So we watched Under Siege 2. <laughs> the Siege Dark game. Territory. Mm -hmm. Wait. Your ball fell off. After Die Hard, which I believe was 88, there's a whole giant just machine making films called Die Hard on a Blank. And Under Siege 1 was Die Hard on a Ship. Yes. Die Hard 3 was going to be on a ship. And after Under Siege was made, they're like, well, can't do that now. Dart 3 is uh, it's all this like Simon Says game they play in yeah, New York. Yeah, he's trying like, to distract everyone this, while he steals all the gold from underneath got, New York. There's 400 yeah, bombs planted in various parts of New York, including schools, and it's like, you're gonna play a Simon Says game with me where you do like a scavenger hunt. It's very, it's very silly. I want you to go to Brooklyn and wear a sign on you, Bruce Willis, that says, I hate N-words. Yeah. And Sam Jackson <laughs> is like, excuse me, what are you and, and, doing? Do, do they actually write out the N-word? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But they blur it on network television, yes. so I didn't know for a long time what this scene was really about. And then I like saw the DVD, I was like, oh shit, yeah. this scene is like way more intense. No wonder I never no. got it. Good morning. Good morning. You feeling all right? Not to get too personal. But a white man standing in the middle of Harlem wearing a sign that says, I hate Nick. I had very intense conversation with the head of production of Fox, head of creative. I said, I don't want to sell it to you unless you give me your word that you're going to keep the script fairly intact. Now, that whole sequence that you mentioned that happens in Harlem, that was one of the sequences that was near and dear to me. The guy said, yes, absolutely. We, that's one of the sequences that we love. And I said, wonderful. And we concluded the sale. I then flew out to Hollywood to meet with them, and the first thing that, th that the guy said was, this sequence in Harlem, we don't really like. We'd like you to reconceive it. The same guy that you were on the phone Yes, with? when it was then presented to him as Die Hard with a Vengeance. Wonderful, I've always loved the beginning of the script, particularly the Harlem sequence. Hey, Zeus, is a friend of yours? He looked like a friend of mine. Die Hard 2? Is in an airport? With an airplane, It's yeah. Die Hard in an airport. Die Hard on a plane, there was executive decision. Steven Seagal is in and he dies right away. At the very Which beginning. is like a twist. Yeah, you expect him to be a major character and he dies immediately. Yeah. When that movie premiered, Seagal was at that premiere. And when Seagal dies five minutes in the movie, the audience cheers <laughs> and he had like a mental breakdown. And his, his agent had to be like, no, they're cheering because they love Are they booing me? Uh, no, they're saying boo earns, boo earns. <laughs> <laughs> he realized he was a joke. Everyone was like, yay, they killed Steven Seagal. What kind of babbling bullshit is this? Passenger 57, Con Air, sudden death with uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme as Die Hard in a, a well, hockey game. Well, I like game. to call the, the j movie genre unexpected badass. There's always someone it's, there uh, who'd be like, yeah. oh. We had oh, this no, big plan. Oh no, there's a badass here. Right. Oh, if only this badass wasn't here, I didn't expect this badass there's to this be here. There's this one <laughs> newer cop in this skyscraper. So Under Siege is about these dudes take over uh, the USS Missouri, a battleship, uh, and they take the nuclear weapons. They're like, we're gonna shoot those and let's pay us money. Or we're taking them to North Korea or something like Which, that. Which, why would there be nuclear weapons on a battleship? I think they had uh, missiles. I think that was on the USS thing. Missouri. They they brought oh, they, they brought him out of retirement. Reg, this is the thing Reagan did. He brought these old ass fucking battleships out of retirement, and they fought in like mm. Desert Storm. I thought they and then just, they immediately re-retired them. I thought they just did. We're talking about the plot of Under Siege, so <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. So Gary Busey and Tommy Lee Jones show up, and they take the ship hostage. But there's a cook they weren't counting on that's on the ship. That's Steven Seagal. He's the cook slash former Navy SEAL. <laughs> I recommend that he be given a psychological evaluation before taking over his next assignment. Do I look like I need a psychological evaluation? 
Uh, and this, this is exactly the same plot, yeah. except now he's on a train. So was he a cook for the Navy SEALs? He's just a former Navy SEAL. <laughs> Who's just like taking an easier gig? Uh, don't give him the brandy, because I'm going to use that to make the cake. The original script for Under Siege 2 Dark Territory was written by Matt Reeves, who was one of the writer's co-creators, I think, of Felicity. He's a J.J. <laughs> yeah. Abrams buddy. Uh, what I love about Die Hard was the idea of the underdog. There's this guy, he's a cop, he doesn't even have shoes, but Steven Seagal movies aren't because Steven Seagal can never be injured, can never be wrong. He always knows everything. He, his gut always tells him exactly what to do, and he always wins every fight at all times. He got shot yeah. once, but it was like... Just barely mentioned. Oh, shit. You think this has been shot? This ain't been shot. Did you see the body? I assumed she was dead. Assumption is the mother of all fuck ups. Instantly okay. never but comes up again. They thought they He's... saw blood on the outside of the train and they were yeah. like, oh, we got him. Steven so Scott. It's basically, is... he turns it into his own advantage. What do we call the train mile high club? Getting railed. Getting railed. <laughs> yeah. Write it down. You just wrote next movie. <laughs> what if it's two lesbians? Does getting railed still apply? The strap ons exist. Yeah. This is fair. What if They're you don't? Still on but you don't have your strap on, on with you. You're in the bu- you're in a train. Is that a rail? Yes. You can get railed like that. Have you ever been finger banged? Can't say that I have. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Who wants to tell me the plot of Under Siege 2? Um, an uncle and a niece. It's Die yeah. Hard on a train. Yeah, they go on a train ride and something with satellites. <laughs> an, an earthquake All right. causing satellites. What's happening out? I want you to explain to me Under Siege 2. For some reason, they end up on the a billion train. dollars. They want a billion dollars. Yeah, that's, a, that's um, not so they some little reason. Get on a train, and they have this weird doodad that talks to a satellite in the sky. I think and it's a computer. It, it, yeah, <laughs> something like that with those, those special CD-ROM. For stage two, I thought this movie was about trains. Wow, what have we got Planes, here? Planes, trains, automobiles. Clean it up. Buns, each buns. Oh my god, she's turning over. Jim. Billion dollar government satellite, and the first thing they do is use it to. Look at this resolution. We get to see. Welcome over. Pixelated. It's a satellite that makes earthquakes. And, and it can blow up planes out of the sky, too. Apparently so. Um, it's an earthquake in the sky. <laughs> for some <laughs> reason. That's a good line. For the gentleman's ex-wife is on board yeah. on this particular jet. He wants you to blow up a jet plane going 500 miles an hour with a weapon designed for subterranean strikes. Yeah. Whoa. Earthquake on a plane. That's got to be the most expensive. Earthquake in midair. Like the main government didn't seem to know anything about it, and they were just like, "You damn CIA guys!" Yeah, there, yeah. there's a moment where you're like, "Oh no, they're gonna have theme in this film," and they're like, "The CIA is doing shit they're not supposed to be doing," and the military is giving them. It's like we're gonna have like some kind of meaning to this, and then they're just like, "Yeah." Anyway, <laughs> the script was called Dark Territory. Uh, when they finished writing it, the spec market crashed, and they couldn't sell it. And then they did sell it to Warner Brothers, who turned it into the Under Siege sequel. How does the spec market crash? There were a lot of bidding wars for scripts, and it, I think Showgirls ended that. It was like Lethal Weapon was a big one, Basic Instinct. And at some point they're like, hey, we don't need to spend $20 million on the script. We can just hire writers for way less than that. Yeah. And have them come up with some shit we come up with in a meeting doing, while doing cocaine. And it comes out just as good. Like, yeah. We don't need to do this. Hell no, man, I ain't coming out there. Young man, don't make me raise my voice. Come here. <laughs> we have our investors on the line. Does he ever raise his voice? According to Morris Chestnut, Seagal rewrote many of the scenes. He would come to set and go, okay, you're going to say this. I'm going to say this, and this is going to happen. And that's how we did a lot of them. I'm going to shock the world by spreading caca all over the place. Director Jeff Murphy <laughs> called making the film, quote, a very dreary process and very highly contentious. Lots of arguments and stuff. There was a point during the editing where I observed this incredibly high energy beast emerging. I didn't know where it came from because there was not any of that energy on the set. 
It seemed to grow out of the editing process. Ooh. So the director hated the filming, thought it was terrible, the movie was going to be bad, and then he's like, this editor made this look exciting. I don't know. <laughs> if there's enough, if you shoot enough, yeah. you can make it look good. This is like the, hey, you got bad effects, but... Snip, snip. Make... I just had sex with the best lover ever. Me. Me. <laughs> Travis Dane was a nut. The man drove his car into a lake. He was crazy. They found the body yet? No, just the car. And a note that said, chance favors the prepared mind. That is a Louis Pasteur quote. Oh. Yeah, fan of Pasteur. Louis Pasteur is the bad guy. There's a Twin Peaks person. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, Big, Big Ed. Ed. He looks pretty cute in this one. We got Big Ed in one movie and Nadine in the Nadine. other. Nadine! Yeah, Nadine! Uh, no. Yay, of Big Jonathan so Banks from uh, Breaking Bad, <laughs> Better Call Saul. He's the bad guy who takes over and becomes the train driver. I got my first period today. So what? It's only the first time I've ever gotten it, that's all. I'm 15 years old. So what's the big deal? It means that blood is flowing out of my uterus. Oh. What Judy has just told Johnny is the type of oversimplification that can be easily misunderstood. We had a, another uh, killing of an ex-wife reference. In The Glimmer Man, his ex-wife is murdered to frame him. In this one, when they take over the earthquake weapon, uh, like Saudi prince or somebody, is like, can you kill my ex-wife for me? So much money to kill one person in the most like hundred million dollars over the top fashion i want to say that in roger ebert's review he makes a comment that killing your wife would be cheaper than that that's my Thanks, whole point Raj. like this whole <laughs> baby cross mace pepper spray sold to civilians once you get used to it Clears his house. Yeah, it's like some sort of like a masochist. I think he puts uh, that shit on his eggs. <laughs> Steven Seagal creates a uh, bomb out of a pager and a cocktail shaker. Do you have to type that out on the phone? I don't really recall how pagers work. I've, I've never, never used, used a pager. pager. I have no idea how. I want to say works. the way pagers worked is you you just set entered a number. Yeah, yeah. I thought that's yeah. how it worked. I I don't know how you send text to a pager. Right in the comments, how do pages work? <laughs> also, We're how much does it cost young. to kill a wife? It's always a, a little range. He's no, hanging. he catches a blue plant. Oh, he catches a plant. Yeah. Looney, falls. Looney Tune style. And then, one and, little then, plant. and then catches the rock wall. And we said something about... He's got grip. death grip. Grumbling. Yeah, coming in hot. Yeah, because he... <laughs> he's is, got death grip. Yeah, because clearly he's got very good grip strength, which is good for, for some things. <laughs> but for <laughs> other things... So Steven Seagal's penis, yeah. desensitized. All he can do is just jerk <laughs> off really hard. Death grip syndrome. I think I'd lose my mind if it weren't for masturbation. If he'll never be able to come with a woman is my, my reading on this. We had a rape allegation against you, and I wonder how you deal with all that. Good. Maybe yeah. this is why he's a sex pest. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> Now, I broke my bra. It's the knife. Oh, what a great if he just came out like a That's a Willem Dafoe movie. <laughs> we should just remake this movie. <laughs> we're, we're on a train that gets taken over by terrorists, and I'm like, you know what, guys? I got this. Give me a gun, and I just go through the, the train. Windmilling, I'm <laughs> shooting terrorists in the head. I've, got a, I've got a title for Save this us. film. Death Grip 2. <laughs> wow, I love it. I was just kind of Windmills of Justice, but... Death Grip 2, Windmill of Justice. Yes, yes. It's the knife world. Eric Bogosian, 
uh, decides in about 40 seconds that he can track stealth planes by going, oh, they create turbulence. Click, click, click. I can track stealth planes now. Oh, none of you care, but it's so no, bad. No, it was pretty. It's so bad. It's totally useless to use stealths here, because it's like, the whole point of the stealth is it avoids radar. Like, do they have a fucking radar dish on this train? They disturb the air as they fly through it. Low altitude turbulence, that's how you find these things. There you are. Going hot and thicker, low. Like the Vulcan mind melt. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that was good. Oh yeah. Weird. She's young, isn't she young? Sixteen. You and me, or me and her. The bad guy at the end, we're gonna have a knife fight. We're like, he's a chef, why doesn't he have a chef's knife? But then the bad guy has the chef's knife. But then knife. they end up in the kitchen, then the bad guy has the chef's knife. Which you don't want to use that knife in a knife fight. No, you, can you only... can't stab, yeah, it's, a, yeah, it's you... only a, yeah. It's a good hack. It's a chop. Yeah, you're screwed if you got that knife. We needed some one-liners in that one, like. Here's the chef's salad. Nobody beats me in the kitchen. I mean, I think we've seen one-liners are not Steven Seagal's strong suit. Yeah, because he says everything. I know. why this guy is famous. I've not seen that many cigars. Why is this guy famous? And I think it's the ponytail. The casting director of Under Siege 2 apparently didn't watch Under Siege 1 <laughs> because uh, while Seagal was on vacation, he comes back to find that Gary Busey has been cast as the villain in Under Siege 2, despite the fact that he was a villain in Under Siege 1 who exploded at the end of the film. <laughs> and it was a pay or play deal, which means no matter what, we've signed you on. If the movie doesn't get made at all, if we decide not to keep you in it, doesn't matter, you still get paid. That's so he got paid $750,000 to do nothing. I mean, nice. he probably noticed he's like, I shouldn't yeah. be in this, right. but I'll... But somebody who had seen the movie was like, what? We can't do that. And Gary Busey's like, ha ha, da 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 It's in there somewhere, hiding among those 50 ghost satellites I've created just for you. Gary Oldman, Lawrence Fishburne, and Jeff Goldblum were offered the role of Travis Dane, the, oh. the main bad guy. Why? They all would have been great. You guys are, are Wait, aiming didn't, real didn't high. Didn't we say David yeah. Schwimmer? Yeah, it should we have been David, David Schwimmer. Schwimmer. Yeah. Yeah. You mean to tell me there's no way that I can shut that off? No way. Oh my god. Here is a quote from IMDb's trivia section. During the production, Steven Skull started wearing a girdle to contain his stomach. This was apparently a temporary fix as he intended to lose the weight. This has not occurred. <laughs> Aww. Shade. Oh my god. Get ready. Oh, there you go. That was a terrible 
she can run faster than a train crash. <laughs> running faster <laughs> than a train crash. <laughs> I'm lightly jogging faster than a train crash. <laughs> Still running. Not even breaking a sweat. Oh, she made it up the ladder. She already is up the ladder. Here it is. Oh, oh and that guy's there. Oh my god. Yeah. Wow. Can we go home now, Uncle Casey? Yes, this is Hilo 505 November Mike. Denver, come in. The hostages are safe. Yeah! This is Hero 505 November, Mike. A top secret satellite with nuclear capabilities. A team of international terrorists. There's only one problem. They called him Death Grip. You'd be in the jungle, you'd see nothing. And then. Bam, your wiener's getting squeezed and you poop your pants. Tits are too nice. That, that's just a real boob. There's nothing in there. How many tits have you opened up that don't have implants in them? This is the first tit I've ever touched. Whoa, check out the dumper on her. Ass pot. Okay. Now that's what I call a Russian turducken. She's Georgian. How can you, how can you tell she's Georgian? You turn the script. The Winnie murders his ex-wife. I mean, when he's framed for the murder of his ex-wife. I'm going to start by asking you a couple of test questions just to establish a baseline. Please answer yes to both questions. I can't lie. It's against my religion. Is your name Jake Ob? No, but I'll never tell you the real one. Have you ever been struck by lightning? multiple times. Is your hair real? It's all real. Give me all your money. You take, discover. Betrayed by his partner. That's the twist of the movie. I knew it. How did you see through my ruse? I'm allergic to bullshit. Is that a tough dietary restriction to work around? What? What? Huh? Oh, shit. Put the wiener down. Drop the wiener. It's soft, man. It's soft. They thought he was unarmed. Assumption is the mother of all fuckups. But they weren't counting on. Ugh. Windmill of justice. This time, it's pierced. Come on out of there. We need all the hostages in one place. Ugh. We didn't die for it. I'm immune. Me too. Do you have death grip? Yeah. We both have death grip. We both have death grip. This is why we can never truly love a woman. Or a man. We're so alike, you and I. So York, it's Saturday. My Michael Bolton. Steven Seagal. Ladies and gentlemen, Steven Seagal. The series producer Lorne Michaels, cast members David Spade and Tim Meadows all regard Seagal as the worst host ever. If Lauren Michaels says it, that means it's no. something. Because he's been there for all of them. And we're saying true. we respect you. If we're getting you on the show to host, we all want it to work. Yep. And if you make fun of yourself, this is where it gets tricky. If you make fun of yourself, it will benefit you. And we promise you. And if you don't, and you fight it so much, and that was him. He was too cool and had his image. And, you know, like Stallone would come on. You know, whoever would come on and just, they make fun of Rock. And, you know, that's the way to do it. Yeah. And then people go, oh, you're a human. Go, 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 go get an ambulance, please. What? Aren't you Sylvester Stallone? Yes, yes, yes. Come on, come on, come on. Sir. I saw white light. I felt this inner peace. Uh -huh. I thought I was going to heaven. 
But then that guy from that horrible movie, Rhinestone, showed up. Steven Seagal uh, hosting of Saturday It's not Night on there? It is not on there. We couldn't find it anywhere because I have looked for it. What happened with the Hans and Franz sketch? All right, pull it out. Okay, here All we right. go. Finger. All right. Okay. Go. All right, push from. We did it at Read Through. And all of it was them making fun of Stephen. Like, right. Arnold is stronger than you. He could flick you with your little baby finger and you would fly across the room and land in your own baby poop. <laughs> and he's just reading his lines and not really reacting to it. Right. Then it gets on the show. It's picked. Then on Thursday, we're just on the soundstage rehearsing it. And we go through it with the cue cards. He reads his lines, very serious. Then he just walks off. So I went up to him. I said, Stephen... Are you okay? And he just didn't look at me. He's looking straight forward. He goes, quote, and I, this is a quote. I just wish Arnold was here so I could kick his fucking ass. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what does that mean? He didn't understand the sketch? Well, he couldn't make fun of himself. So we did the sketch, the sketch different so that he was, there's only one person stronger than Arnold, and that's Steven Seagal. But, <laughs> but it doesn't work. I kind of remember the zen of things, all right? That's no, right. Bye -bye. Thank you. You know, that's good. You know, yeah. Steven's pinky has taught us a great lesson today, Fran. Tim Meadows said, quote, he didn't realize you can't tell somebody that they're stupid on Wednesday and expect them to continue writing for you. What, am I, am I wrong about Sarah's breasts? I mean, they're beautiful, aren't they? Uh, of course Sarah's breasts are beautiful. I just don't want the audience to think you're sexist. Well, well they, they probably think I'm the biggest jerk who's, who's ever been on the show. No, no, that would be Steven Seagal. Well <laughs> David Spade says it's the first time he ever heard them discuss dropping the host and doing a cast-only show. Damn. Wow. Is that bad? Seagal had terrible ideas, including a sketch where he plays a therapist. Victoria Jackson comes in as a patient who has been raped. The therapist says, you're going to have to come to me twice a week for like three years. Because he said, that's how therapists freaking are. <laughs> that's the joke. <laughs> therapists are are bad. And... I, I didn't even laugh at that, and I laugh at everything. <laughs> <laughs> you should have laughed at it for how... Terrible it is. I know. And then uh, Seagal, as the psychiatrist, would try to have sex with her. That's the sketch. That's that was his sketch idea. Yeah, it must have been the wrong therapist, huh? <laughs> How about I'm a therapist and a rape victim comes in and then I try to have sex with her? How? <laughs> it's so bad. Oh my God. They were going with expert time. Uh, Tim Meadows said the biggest problem with Seagal was that he would complain about jokes he didn't get. You can't explain something to somebody in German if they don't speak German. As in, like, he doesn't speak funny. I mean, I, I believe <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. I just read the greatest script I've ever read in my life. <laughs> goes, really? Who wrote it? I did. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote it. I knew oh it! I did it! Seagal is not credited as a screenwriter on any film until 2005. Yeah. Which is 14 years later. Tina and Ivory Wayans has the exact same story. On the set of Glimmer Man. I did. <laughs> Five years later, he's still she's doing the, the same, same bit. I mean, is like, it a joke? Or is like, he like trying to get people on board? On board like, for his movie? I just had sex with the best lover ever. Me. Me. <laughs> Death Grip 3. <laughs> <laughs> So we watched, you guys saw some of it. We watched it while we were eating dinner, but I, me and Aaron watched the whole thing. Uh, he is in a total too. of six parts, six sketches. We only watched a little bit of it, and I feel like there were two sketches he wasn't even well, in. So he's in the cold open with Hans and Franz. I hope you'll forgive me for being a little bit serious, but it's important to me to let you know that there's a lot more to Steven Seagal than the martial arts. Then he does the monologue, which the monologue was basically, he's like, Hey, I play guitar, so I'm gonna play guitar in this monologue. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to sing and play and hang around. They had him turned down really low. Whoa. Everybody was kung fu fight. There's a sketch where he plays a cop, like a, a renegade cop who plays by his own rules which just is an excuse to do the Rob Schneider making copies character. Like, oh, it was just a making copies one? I caught these two guys with three kilos of cocaine. What do you think they were doing with a making shark for girls softball games? It was a little bit frightening. Listen to me carefully. I don't want you to talk about anything to me anymore. I don't want you to say my name anymore. You hear me? They were going with expert time. He does an Andrew Dice Clay. 
Yeah. Which I was, when I was like, oh, he, it's Seagal doing an Andrew Dice Clay. This sounds like it could be funny. Was not funny. Oh, it's 1991. You know, why don't you cut it square? Bada bing. All right, crack em, boy. Then he's a mean dad who is interrogating his daughter's date, which is Chris Farley. Which is, there's a, that, that is exactly a scene in the film Coneheads. I think Dougie here needs a soda. Okay, I'll go get it. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you uh, go out and look, uh, look at it? I'm sure Dougie won't mind. And then the last one is he plays a Greenpeace photographer who confronts some oil company executives about their pollution, which is like making a joke about how he's like an environmentalist because a lot of his early films, the oh, bad he, guys are like polluters. There is one where he's like taking down an oil. I think that's on Deadly Ground. On Deadly Ground. I've seen that one. It must not be good because right. I don't remember anything about it. Good news. <laughs> the judge has just reduced our fine for the Alaskan spill from $2 billion to $160. Now that makes me violent. <laughs> this is what happens when you pollute the planet. So, like, early on in his career, it's like, you know, there's Chuck Norris, there's Stallone, there's all these, like, uh, action stars. He's like, I'm a Buddhist, I'm a pacifist, I'm an, I'm environmentalist. an environmentalist. It's like, oh, it's like a lefty socialist version of but, an action star. Yeah. He is a Trump MAGA yeah. racist idiot. So it's like, I don't know what happened to that. But the press will be very interested to know why the president of the United States was talking to you on the speakerphone. I noticed that he doesn't know where to look. It's like, <laughs> it, usually when they're doing improv, it's like, we're at a store and you're buying things, but everyone's kind of facing out like towards the audience. Yeah. Yeah. They're not facing each other. So there's a whole lot of sketches where like you go to the camera and Seagal is like this, like <laughs> looking exactly at <laughs> people. Hey! I've got a picture of you talking about Exxon hit teams and assassinations. And perhaps the most interesting picture of you listening to the president of the United States. kind of remember the zen of things, all right? It's like he hasn't been trained as like an actor it, or anything. Just in anything, really. Right. He's just <laughs> doing it. Yeah. Just there. It's like you let a dog loose on a, on a film I, set. I charted our laugh, laughs out loud, our L's OL. Oh, you did? Me and Aaron's when oh, we watched okay. it. I had nine laughs that were unrelated to Seagal, something else. I had two that were at Seagal. And zero that were with Seagal. Oh, so, uh, that's what we got out of that well, episode. I would not recommend watching it. For anger leads to violence, and only the path of nonviolence leads to ecological wholeness. I understand. The Kuwaiti people would like to thank you for your effort. While I was at, in exile at the Sheraton Hotel in Monaco, care, compassion, dedication, these are the things we can promise you at Winston Macaulay Funeral Home. And there's one other thing we can promise, that we will never have sex with any dead body. That was funny. And if they do have sex with the bodies, they get suspended with pay for six weeks. That's the and you dead get a body guarantee. thousand dollar back guarantee. Yeah, we give you a thousand dollars back if your dead relative was raped. If you can prove that we had sex with your dead relative's body. If a lawsuit is inevitable, lay back and enjoy it. <laughs> There's so many, like those commercials and like those little sketches. He's yeah. not in any of those. No, that had nothing Weekend to do with Weekend Update, he's not in. There's a couple of whole sketches he's not in. Yeah. Michael Bolton appears in a sketch. Yeah, that's true. Aaron decided that Michael Bolton is cosplaying as a black woman. <laughs> that if you close your eyes and listen to Michael Bolton, it's like black lady gospel. <laughs> From that moment on, Bray Stone ceases to exist. He becomes Bray Steele, Greenpeace photographer. <laughs> All right, we're gonna play a game. I have character names that Seagal, this is Seagal's character in a film, mm -hmm. or the character names of John Holmes' characters, John Holmes' famous porn star. Oh, okay, yeah. 
Oh, okay. okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna name a. F- Is there a crossover at some point where it's so like, it's porno or it's Seagal? It's Seagal or it's John Holmes porn. Is Seagal ever in a porno? Just so later, later. Death Grip Four. <laughs> Mason Storm. Seagal. 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 That is Seagal. That's hard to kill. Hard to kill. Professor Rex Wright. Uh, porno. That sounds like a porno. I'm going to go with porno too, only because Co- it sounds like Correct. Porno. Those are all from the John Holmes porn. Three came running. <laughs> I can't imagine Seagal <laughs> playing any running. character with a doctorate. No. Captain John Smith. Seagal. Was Seagal in a Pocahontas film? <laughs> I know. I'm going porno with this one. <laughs> I'm just going with Seagal. Just going Seagal, you're going porn. It is porn. That is from uh, The Spirit of 76. Oh. oh, so it was okay. a Pocahontas porn. Yeah. Not familiar with that. Cock puncher. <laughs> <laughs> is this a trap? Um, I don't know. Is it a trap? I'm going to say Seagal. Cock porno. Porno. This is Seagal in the The Onion movie. <laughs> oh. From The Onion. They made a movie. Yes. Seagal plays cock puncher. Frank Glass. S- porno. Sporno. Seagal. <laughs> I'm going with porno. It is Seagal from the film Ticker. You don't want to be named Glass if your mm-hmm. job is using your dick. I mean, glass ass. B.C. Buzzard. <laughs> That's porno. Porno? That has to be porno. porno. I don't think it's porno. Are you saying Seagal? That is porno. That is John uh. Holmes in personal services. <laughs> uh. Noah Mammoth. <laughs> That's a porno. That's a porno. porno. That's a porno. That's a porno. That is John Holmes in the film Balls in Action. <laughs> balls in action. Oh, ball trick. He just fucks them with his balls? Just balls squeezes them both in. Tucks, <laughs> tucks up and scrunches up. Austin Travis. Oh, Seagal. That, that's so bad. That's a really bad action movie name. That has got to be Seagal. Seagal, yeah. Seagal, that's correct. That's Seagal's character in Executive Decision. Travis Hunter. <laughs> Seagal again. That's Seagal, Seagal again. Seagal. Seagal. That is Seagal again. That's Into the Sun, another Seagal film. Into the Sun? Into the Sun. Into the Sun. Detective Gino Fellino. <laughs> oh, that's porn. That's porn, 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 porn. That's, porn. Porn. that's Steven Seagal oh in the film Out wow. for Justice. No. <laughs> Dino Foligno. Dino Foligno. Robert Burns. Like the poet Robbie Burns. Yeah. Robert Burns. Where are you going? Seagal? Going Seagal too. I think this is a gonorrhea themed porno. <laughs> so you're going porn? Yeah. This is Seagal out for a kill. Damn. Polly Trunks. Trunks? Trunks. Trunks. Um, like swim trunks. Polly Trunks. Porn. I'm going yeah. porn too because you said in, swim trunks. I'm going Seagal. It is Seagal. Polly Trunks in Gut Shot Straight. Charlie Strayhorn. Seagal. Porn. That's a porno. It is a porno. That's from the film Up and Coming. Oh. <laughs> Father Clement. Porn. <laughs> porn. Seagal. It is porn. Oh. Father Clement is John Holmes' character in the autobiography of a flea. Flea, flea the Do drummer flea? from. Red Hot Chili Flea Bag is what I'm thinking Oh, uh, that's Phoebe. Phoebe Cates? Waller no, Cates? No, Phoebe ba- Waller, Waller Bridges? Ba- yes, Phoebe Waller Bridges. Phoebe Waller Bridges, Phoebe Cates. Those are two different people. Two different people. The I Zodiac Killer. That. Who played the Zodiac Killer? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll tell you, the film is called Zodiac Killer, and he was uncredited <laughs> as the Zodiac Killer. <laughs> Porno! There's no way Seagal would take an uncredited role. I don't care who gets the credit. Beautiful. Yeah. I, yeah. You're right. It's John Holmes. There was an X rated comedy from 1971 <laughs> in what? the midst of the Zodiac killings where John Holmes plays the Zodiac killer. <laughs> Is it X rated? An X rated comedy. A comedy. How X rated? Jonathan Cold. That's that's Seagal. 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 Yeah. Porno. Porno. It is Seagal. The film Black Dawn. Agent John Galt. John oh, Galt? that's Seagal because I've seen whatever this is. Was he a fan Seagal, of uh, I'm Seagal. Atlas Shrugged? Oh shit, maybe that's where I know the name. Yeah, so. John Galt is a character in Atlas Shrugged. Okay, that's why it's so funny. Um, this is porno. Oh. This is John Holmes' character in the film The Senator's Daughter. Here's a list why? of uh, the remaining character names, some of the remaining character names from Steven Seagal. Jack Cole. Jack Taggart, Jake Hopper, Jack Miller, Jack Foster, John Alexander, Jack Alexander, and just Jake. 
<laughs> but, a never a Jacob, but never a Jacob. But never a Jacob. Is Under Siege 2 higher or lower than Glimmer Man? It has lower. to be higher. It's slightly You're saying Under Siege 2 lower. is worse? Yeah. yeah. You're saying Under Siege 2 is better? It's better. It's it, better. It is better. Under Siege 2, 34% critics compared to 11. 5.5 IMDb compared to 5.4. Oh, An audience score... 38%. Exactly the same. What about as a, a good, bad, fun party watch situation? Uh, it's way better in that respect. Under Siege? Yeah. yeah. Two. Although I yeah. still, it's not one I would put on for a party. Right. No. I think I would go Glimmer Man as a, a better bad watch. Because I knew all the stuff about like Seagal was trying to make it funny and they had to cut all the shit and Toblowski's story about like Seagal's like, I'm a pacifist, I don't kill anyone. And they're like, how the fuck do we edit this movie? <laughs> like, watching it, knowing that, made it more fun for me. <laughs> There's a better bet. You have to actually sit there and pay more attention, That's though. possible. But yeah. I feel like I had a lot more weird shit going on. Like, Seagal being as weird, I'm a Buddhist, pacifist, deer penis. No, there were zero boobs in that No, movie. that was what he cut the fucking oh, breast implant there, out. There was dead boobs. I don't oh, no, 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 Those no, there was dead boobs. model boobs. Yeah. At the very beginning from the sky. That's an under, under siege. Oh. Oh. Glimmer Man has him cut out a tit implant. Those to are me, dead that right boobs. Away. That's a corpse boob. That's not the count. only boob. Cold though? boobs don't count. That's a li <laughs> that's a live woman though in real life. I'm, yeah, it's still a real. Sometimes life. no, I don't know about that. Sometimes they actually just cut like, out her uh, real tit implant. Yeah. Fun fact. There was one more really boob in that one. <laughs> Fun fact. You, you can't I think get hard that's a confused that boner right yeah. there. That's a confused boner right there. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it lost the, the piercing. It did, the piercing flailed the shit out of it. Oh. <laughs> See, that's what I'm about. You gotta do a windmill. You gotta like windmill it, and then I'm coming in, and then it's coming in, and then You guys are making me uncomfortable. <laughs> the juice is <laughs> Oh. I ripped off his wiener. I lost my ball too. Yeah. Wait. Watch your balls. Those are all Jeff's balls duties. <laughs> but it um, did feel really long. It did. Right in the crotch. Boom. Cold oh. boobs don't count. They were going with expert time. Are you seeing boo or boons? <laughs> oh, two. Oh, two of them at the same time. That's a key. <laughs> So we watched Under Siege 2. <laughs> the siege Dark games. territory. Mm -hmm. Wait. Your ball fell off. Oh, that's uh, oh, no, the I just had sex with the best lover ever. Me. <laughs> Me. <laughs> Last night I finished reading the sickening piece of trash Pulitzer. How could a Kitty Kelly lie about such a fine and classy lady like Nancy Reagan? Slut.